Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So like any other interesting video, so today you in fact we're going to see about another interesting and a frequently asked question to me. So the question here is how to determine the peak user load for load test. So this is again another frequently asked question to me and every time i have to give the same answer and in fact i would say like there is an improvement to our answers because we have got a lot of options or opportunities to determine the peak user load and in this video we will see how to determine the peak user load with five techniques the industry standard techniques and uh, before we move on to this video this is me yavathan shanmugam i welcome you all to our little sly youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, share the video with your friends uh give your comments or feedbacks and if you have any questions please do ask in the comment section i'm happy to help you with the answers and uh, don't forget to join my channel uh it's just less than 29 rupees a month which is less than a coffee a day for you and uh, it's just 99 pence if you are somewhere in uk and it's even lesser in europe and us so please do consider joining my channel that will motivate me to create quality content daily on daily basis and now with no further delay let's go to the video and here we are going to discuss about five steps to determine the peak user load are you ready and in fact i would say uh, that in this video we're going to see about five steps to determine the peak user load which is an existing application and in our next video we are going to see about uh, about another few steps to determine the peak user load for a new application so this is for existing application and the next video is going to be for a new application so if you really do watch need to watch please do subscribe to our channel and wait for the next video so with no further delay let's go to the video and the very first technique is analyzing the historical data how to analyze the historical data so that's a question and how can we do it so the first thing is using the web analytics tools uh, so we have google analytics uh, the main tool which i would say i personally have used it and i have been benefited uh, in terms of uh, determining the peak user loads because this tool uh, the google analytics tool tracks and reports the website traffic and this can be done by examining the data which you can see when your site experiences the highest number of visitors and you can focus on metrics like uh, active users page views and sessions to identify any peak usage times and then you have the aws cloud watch this is a late, uh, recent entry uh, to the analytics uh, tools but again for applications which are hosted on aws on cloudwatch they provides monitoring uh, sorry it provides monitoring and logging and you can even set up dashboards to visualize the key metrics and this is another important uh, i would say a great feature uh, for the uh, analyzing the historical data uh, for doing the analytics part such as the request counts the user rates and latency which will help you to pinpoint high traffic periods and then there are other monitoring solutions as well which are available in the market which are like tools like uh, neuralic we have datadog even in azure monitor yeah we have one in azure which is the azure monitor which helps uh, which provides you valuable insights into the user activity and application performance and you can use these tools to analyze the traffic patterns and even you can determine the peak load times and apart from the uh, web analytics tools we have server logs as well uh, for example you can use the access logs to review your web server logs for example it can be apache uh, logs or it can be an nginx logs to track the request patterns and even you can analyze the logs to find the times and dates with the highest number of requests so these will help you to uh, determine the peak user load and uh, moving on to the error logs again uh, by checking the error logs to understand when and why the failures occur which can be correlated with the peak load times so that's another way of uh, determining the peak user load which is the error logs and then the application log so if your application has logging uh, for specific user actions like logins or purchases so you can use these logs to identify the most frequent action during the peak periods and moving on to the second part which is the understanding of user behavior so what is understanding of user behavior so it can be done through user journey analysis i would say uh, mainly uh, through the user flow uh, so by mapping out the typical paths the user take within your application uh, for example uh, doing transactions like search or adding to cart or a user getting registration or a user is canceling his transaction so these are some of the typical paths the user does within the application and you can use tools like google analytics which have uh, user flow reports 
uh, that show the sequence of pages users visit. And I, in fact, would say Google Analytics is one of the best tool in terms of collecting all your data, but they really help you in uh, determining the peak user load by showing you the sequence of the pages the users visit. And uh, even if you have the resource-intensive actions, like, for example, you can identify the actions that require significant resources, for example, the complex searches, the data uploads, or transactions. So by understanding all these actions, uh, you can, uh, which are performed, which will help you to predict the load. And then even uh, apart from user journey analysis, you can, uh, as part of the understanding user behavior, you can even use the peak times identification. So for example, the time of the day or the day of the week or the special events. So when it comes to time of the day, you can determine if your application sees more traffic during specific times. For example, it can be lunchtime or it can be evening hours, whatever time may be. So it can be a specific times and you can determine uh, your application sees more traffic during those time. And then the day of the week, for example, you can identify if certain days, uh, it can be weekday or it can be weekend, where you can consistently see higher traffic. So that's another way of identifying the peak times. And moving on to the special events, so you can note any events or promotions that drive traffic spikes. For example, it can be a Black Friday sales or it can be a product launches or even I would say uh, booking a ticket on, before a festival day. That's again a special event. So these are some of the examples uh, I would say uh, some of the ways where you can easily identify the uh, user behavior, right? And then moving on to the third part, which is estimating the growth. So when it comes to estimating the growth, you can do it via two ways. One is the seasonal trends and the other way is through the future projection. So when it comes to the seasonal trends, um, you can do it via the historical data. So by looking at the previous year's data to identify the seasonal patterns, for example, uh, it can be increased shopping activity during the holiday season or even I would say nowadays uh, people, uh, for any festival season, I would say people do not go to the uh, shops, rather they do all the bookings via the online portal. So that it will, will show uh, like how much, how many users have used in the previous year and how many users are going to use it for the current year. So this is another way, the way of looking at the previous uh, previous year's data. For example, if there are like 10 million users, it's going to be automatically, it's going to increase, right? When it comes to the uh, year after year, uh, since the online has come up uh, in the hands of everyone. So we are giving a lot of options and opportunities to do everything via online. So that's another way the peak, the internet peak has spiked up and then the marketing event so uh, you can account for planned marketing events or campaigns that may cause traffic spikes and you can collaborate with your marketing team to get these insights so this is another way of estimating the growth through seasonal trends and then uh, through the future projection so i would say using the growth rate so by using the historical growth rate to estimate the future traffic for example if the traffic has been growing at 10 percent per month you can apply this rate to predict the future peaks and then when it comes to the business plans you can consider the company's business plans and targets so for example if a new feature or a product is being launched you can expect an increase in traffic for example if you know we all know if a new Apple iPhone or a new Apple iPad has been launched, we all know automatically there will be a huge traffic, an increase in traffic, and no matter what. It's even for a Samsung or even it's for a, a new NVIDIA chip. So what? no matter what, and nowadays, like, we are crazy in uh, booking things, and we automatically increase the traffic. So, yeah, by doing all these, we, are, we can estimate the growth, and by estimating the growth, you can determine the peak load of the application for your load test. And then moving on to the next part, which is simulating different scenarios. So how to simulate different scenarios? What's, what are the two methods? So I will take you through two simple methods. One is the baseline load test, and the other one is the incremental load test. So what is baseline load test? We all know what is a baseline. So how do we determine, or how do we use it to determine the um, peak load so by having the current capacity so start with the baseline load test to measure the current capacity of your application so you can use tools like apache jmeter or k6 to simulate a realistic number of users by uh, by performing typical actions and you can even use performance metrics so you can track the metrics such as the response times the throughput and the error rate to, to establish a performance baseline so by doing this you can very well simulate uh, the scenarios using the baseline load test and you can determine your uh, peak load for your load test. And then moving on to the next one, which is the incremental load test. So far we saw about the baseline load test, now it is about the incremental load test where you can gradually increase the number of virtual users in increments by 50 or 100, or if you really want to test it more, you can even increase it to 250 or 500 users during your load testing. So by gradually increasing it, you can determine your 
kick load and then even uh, by identifying the limits as well yep uh, i would say this is another way of, way of doing this testing like stress testing where you continuously increase the load until the performance metrics like the response times or the error rates or even the application might fail so this will help you to identify the maximum load your application can handle before experiencing any issues and moving on to the last one, which is consulting the stakeholders of so business insights, I would say is a best way of communicating your growth expectations and even planning. So you have to discuss with the business stakeholders to understand the expected user growth, the market expansion plans and upcoming campaigns, which definitely might increase your applications traffic so yeah so this i mean i would say the consulting uh, with the stakeholders is a key point where sorry the communication is the key point so you have to keep on discussing you have to understand what exactly is happening and how does it work so that's another way of i would say a key uh, the key uh, concept here is the communication so you have to talk to your stakeholders you have to understand the growth expectations and even uh, in terms of the event planning so you have to gather information about the planned events the product launches or promotions that could lead to traffic surges so by doing all these uh, in terms of the growth expectations or in terms of the event planning you can understand uh, i mean at the end of your discussion you would arrive a number so that you can set it up as your uh, peak load for your load test and then the customer feedback again Previously, you talked with the business and now it's going to be a customer. So you can use the user patterns, for example. You can collect feedback from the customer support or from the sales team about the user patterns because they often have insights into common user issues or compliance that may indicate performance problems. And uh, the expected load, I would say, uh, where the customer-facing teams will provide you valuable feedback on the expected load based on customer interactions and queries, which help you to anticipate traffic spikes. So when it's when I'm saying uh, about the customer interactions, it's mostly into the marketing team. So people who work on the marketing team might know how many users uh, are, will be anticipated during a season, during a peak season or during the uh, peak day. So by doing all these, by following all these steps, you can accurately determine the peak user load. So I would, again, I'm stressing on the word, which is you can accurately determine the peak user load for your load testing. And this approach will ensure that your application is prepared to handle real world traffic, which provides a smooth and reliable experience even during peak usage periods. So with that, I come to an end and I definitely believe this video will be very useful to you. And as I mentioned you earlier, in our next video, we will see how to determine the peak user load for a new, very new, brand new application, a very fresh, app, fresh application, which has come from scratch for the first time. And that would be more interesting than this. So please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, uh, like the channel, do join our channel and Post your comments and questions or feedbacks in the comment section. And thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please do post it in the comment section as well. Thank you so much. And until I meet you in our next video, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and your favorite Little Star YouTube channel. Bye-bye.